Hello learners, uh, welcome to our session today, a continuation of what we are doing earlier on, advanced financial management, and the concept that uh, we were looking at was a uh, certainty equivalent coefficient. That's the concept that we introduced in our last class. We also did a question, and today I want us to do a second question, and in our case today, I want us to handle a question which was tested in August 2022, question number 1C. August 2022, question number question number 1c that's a question that molimo will want us to handle remember we say that uh, under this technique the cash flows of our project are assigned a factor which represents the proportion of net cash flows which must be realized which must be realized so these are condition of risk right but even on this condition as much as i'll be having uh, kind of, of fluctuations of our cash flows, but we have these cash, cash flows that we kind of know we must realize. And that's why we need to use a certainty equivalent coefficient. Say, for example, if a factor I'm given, if a factor of uh, 0 0.7 in a certainty equivalent coefficient, this means that 70% of the cash flows will be realized. If, for example, I'm having a factor of, say, 0 0.6, this means that 60% of the cash flows will be realized. So you see we are under conditions of uncertainty. But at the same time, at this point, you'll find that the whole idea is always about the concept of net uh, present value. So in the event that we are dealing with, uh, of course, a certainty equivalent uh, coefficient concept, and we are required majorly to determine our net present value i'm required to determine our net present value what will we be required to do my good students at this point we'll always be taking our present value times the factor certainty equivalent coefficient in this case is when i'm going to let's sort our initial outlay this is how we can determine our npv given a concept of what certainty equivalent coefficient and for us to basically be able to understand the concept clearly, I want us to handle this question, which was tested in August 2022, question number 1A. Let me share that question with us here so that at least we can go through that question together. My good students, this is our question here. I believe is uh, very visible on our end. I believe this question is quite visible on our end. So if we were to go through that question these are what you are told a good examiner here is telling us that a good examiner here is telling us that uh, at this point i'm having a project requires an initial investment of 500,000 it is expected to generate cash inflows of 200,000 per annum for the next 5 years Additional information, I'm told that the firm is indifferent between certain amount of 181,387 at the end of the first year and the expected amount of 200,000. Okay, so I'm um, uncertain of, I know I can realize in between 181 to 200,000, right? Uh, first year and consecutive years, I'll be having 200,000. The risk-free rate of return is 5% per annum. So here the examiner wants us to, number one, determine the net present value of the project incorporated, incorporating certainty equivalent coefficient, CEC. I'm given five marks. Advise the management on whether the project is worthwhile. So my good students, given such a question, what, should, what you should do is just to smile. When you're having such a question, the first thing that you need to do is to do what? Is to smile. Why should you smile? You should smile because we have everything in our fingertips. We have everything in our fingertips. I'm squeezing this question so that we can have it as you're working it out. So, once I have that question, my business will say that we should smile, right? Give the examiner that smile because at this point, Molimo has already guided us here. That for us to determine our NPV under condition of certainty equivalent coefficient, I should be looking for present value times 
uh, coefficient equivalent uh, of course that is certain efficient uh, that is a uh, aspect of a certainty equivalent coefficient is what we should be having a CC so in this case where are we going to start for my new students it is important to remind ourselves that at any given point in time because at this point you've agreed for us to determine that NPV we've said we must be having our present value right times our certainty equivalent coefficient then in this case we less our initial outlay here comes a case you might be given different scenarios how will you determine our present value present value of course will always determine will always vary given the condition say for example if i want to determine a present value in the case of lump sum lump sum is a situation whereby i am receiving an equal amount of cash flow we are receiving an equal amount of cash flow this is lump sum so recall for us to determine our present value in a condition where we normally tend to talk of a lump sum we normally tend to talk of our cash flows right we multiply by present value interest factor and how will you determine this factor this factor is uh these are we are looking at a condition whereby i'm having uh in this case this is uh, where we are talking of lump sum lump sum right an equal amount of cash flows throughout the year and for us to determine our present value interest factor recall this is only simple because no one tend to call for one plus r raised for negative n that is lump sum then we also have annuity for us to determine our present value under condition of annuity my good students this zone is very simple because at this point we must take this is a present value of course under condition of annuity okay under condition of annuity uh, these are what you must always tend to take present value under condition of annuity we normally tend to consider we normally tend to consider of course our aspect to do with our cash flows times present value interest factor annuity this is where i'm having annuity annuity simply we are looking at a condition whereby we are receiving equal amounts of cash flows this is equal amount of cash flows this is an equal amount of cash flows so this is very important that you must be having in your fingertips this is very important that you must be having in your fingertips okay so once we have that in mind the next stage will be what the next stage here because i know very well that in that question we have been told that i am having annuity so this is what you're supposed to do i'm going to determine my factor and to determine our present value interest factor to determine our present value interest factor annuity given the rate and number of years this one will be very simple i'll just be having my one minus one plus r r you're given risk-free rate of five percent so 0 0.05 raised to power negative five years i'm going to divide here by r this will give us what Mm -hmm. let me pick my calculator so that you work it out together my good students in this case i'll be having a one that is a 1.05 actually raised to power negative five one minus answer i divide by 0 0.05 because this is 0 0.05 this is r right 0 0.05 so in this case i'm having a figure of 4.39432 so that is a what we should be having so once we have that in mind therefore 
my present value will be easy because I'll be taking our cash flows. Annual cash flows, you're given 200,000 times 4.3295. That will be our present value. That will be our present value, which in this case, my good students, we should be having a figure of how much? So 200,000 times 4.3295. Nine five. This should give us eight hundred and sixty-five nine hundred, right? But remember, I need to incorporate our certainty equivalent coefficient. And how do you determine our certainty equivalent coefficient? To determine our certainty equivalent coefficient, this one will be simple because what I'm going to basically uh, uh, have in this case what we are going to incorporate as per what we are given literally. Look at that case. Look at the point where the examiner is telling us that uh, that is uh, point number one. The firm is indifferent between a certain amount of 181 at the end of the first year and expected amount of 200,000. So I'm indifferent of the two. I am indifferent of the two. So what are we going to do, my good students? At this point, this is a point whereby you're going to apply the concept of a certainty equivalent coefficient where I'll be having certain amount of our expected amount. So in this case, I'll be having our certain amount, right? Certain amount over expected certain amount over expected amount this will give us our certainty equivalent coefficient certain amount over expected amount so that i'm certain of receiving 181 347 as per what you're having there right look at that case i'm certain the firm is indifferent between certain amount of 181 347 181,347 and expected amount of 200,000. So this will give us our certainty or a certainty equivalent coefficient of how much? Let us work it out. Let us work it out. Uh huh. Just a moment here. Okay, so that will give us a that will give us, of course, a figure of how much if you work it out. I'm having one eighty one, three forty seven. I divide by two hundred thousand. This should give me that is a one eighty one three forty seven divide by two hundred thousand. This should give me a figure of 0 0.9. So we are 90% sure that you're going to receive uh, this cash flow 0 0.9067. So that is our factor. That is our factor. So once we have our factor, going forward, things will be very easy. I can easily come and determine, therefore, my NPV. So our NPV, therefore, will be as follows. I'm having our present value, which is 865,900. We multiply by our factor, which is 0 0.9067. We less our initial outlay. Our good examiner giving us our initial outlay of 500,000, right? So therefore, I'll be having 865,900 times answer mm -hmm, to give us 785. Minus 500,000. This should give us our NPV to be 285,141.84. So kindly guys confirm if you're getting the same figures. So that is what the examiner wanted us to determine because here he has asked us to 
determine the net present value of this project incorporating certainty equivalent coefficient and we need also to advise so to that point basically the first bit this is what you are required to do for you to earn all your five marks so this is what you're having certainty equivalent coefficient what about advising i know when you're talking about advising on the concept of npv we are all good at that because at this point at any given point whenever our project has a positive npv that is to say this project of ours is viable and in the same case here we're having this project having a positive npv so in this case you can advise the company to proceed and invest in that project because it has a positive npv so my good students ideally that is what you're required to handle in that question and you can clearly see how simple it is so long as you've mastered some few concepts and more so that's why molimo will always start by giving us the whole concept before we look at a question so that is what you're required to do it was long since this question was tested in regard to certainty equivalent coefficient the beauty part of it is that we have looked at one question right so to this point thank you so much guys we meet in our next session where we are going to handle a whole different concept thank you and let us meet in the next session